Prior to the first century, there were plenty of incredibly unique animals which are unfortunately no longer around today. One place which happened to have had more of these unique creatures than any other, which is almost never talked about, was the ancient lands of Cuba prior to and in the beginning of human arrival. During this time only a few thousand years ago, giant owls, sloths the size of bears, and even massive cranes and land crocodiles were all prevalent on the island, making Cuba the last real-life Jurassic Park. So what better way to celebrate my childish obsession with dinosaurs than by talking about the last dinosaurs humanity would have truly encountered. Welcome to Prehistoric Cuba. So starting off with one of my favorite birds to ever exist, besides the true dinosaurs of course, we got Ornomegalonyx. Unlike the other Strix owls, this avian dinosaur was capable of getting up to 4 feet tall and 30 pounds, which made it 8 times larger than the largest modern day owl, the Great Grey Owl. But unlike the Great Grey Owl, which was an excellent flyer, the Ornomegalonyx would rely way more on its large powerful legs for chasing down its prey. Yes, you heard me right this owl, which could get up to almost as tall as a small human being, would actually chase its prey on foot, as they likely weren't that good of flyers due to their large size. But don't worry, these adorable yet also terrifying creatures wouldn't chase down humans. Instead, they'd mostly chase down Hutia rats, some of which back in the day could have even rivaled the modern day capybara in size. So even though this owl wasn't hunting humans, it was definitely going after some large prey. Part of the reason why it's now believed that these owls are extinct is because of humans, which when they arrived onto Cuba would have hunted the Hutia rats to near extinction. This would result in some of the larger species of Hutia going extinct, and the giant owl now having to compete with humans for food. Even though these owls were able to coexist with humans for about 5,000 years, they would still inevitably go extinct due to this setback around the same time the Egyptian pyramids were being built. In other words, they would meet their end about 46,000 years ago. But who knows, maybe these guys will one day bring them back, which may or may not be a good idea. Just like the Megalonyx, the burrowing owls are primarily diurnal and also use their long legs to chase down their prey, though burrowing owls, as they're much smaller, were likely way better flying. Flyers. Yet, for as much as I love burrowing owls, I mean they're literally my school's mascot, they still don't compare at all to the majesty that would have been seeing this real-life dinosaur in person. But hey, Cuba at least had some other really incredible amazing giant birds, some of which were even significantly larger than the Ornomegalonyx, and one of my favorites of these birds just so happens to be the giant Cuban flightless crane. If Ornomegalonyx was the terror bird of Cuba, then Cuba's giant flightless crane would essentially be its ostrich. Likely being a descendant of an early population of sandhill cranes, the Cuban flightless crane, just like Ornomegalonyx, suffers from gigantism, though instead of becoming taller than their ancestors, they would instead become heavier. While it's not entirely known, it is currently believed that the main reason why they lost their ability to fly was because of the lack of mammalian predators on Cuba back in the day, compared to the mainland which the sandhill cranes would have originally came from. Also, unlike the mainland, there was likely way more food available for these cranes back in the day, which also partially contributed to their giant size. Still despite getting over 3 feet tall and over 10 pounds, they mainly fed on smaller food items, like insects, frogs, and small snakes. Yet again, they likely also took advantage of the occasional grains and fruits from time to time. Yet these birds were still far from invincible despite their large size. They would have still regularly been hunted by the modern day Cuban crocodile and also humans as soon as they arrived onto the island, which inevitably contributed to their extinction. At least with the Cuban giant flightless crane, their current closest modern day relatives, the true sandhill cranes do occasionally visit the island of Cuba, though they usually don't stay year round. So at least unlike our next animal, their legacy has still been able to partially carry on, and who knows, maybe there's a small chance these guys could re-evolve in the future. Tragically, this next group of animals won't be re-evolving anytime soon. 
the Mega Loch Ness, which were the last of the giant ground sloths, just so happened to also live on the lands of Cuba until shockingly recently. Having had only gone extinct about 4,000 years ago, these guys were around at about the same time as the Roman Empire, and while not being dinosaurs in any sort of way, I'd go as far as to argue that they were just as interesting and iconic as the dinosaurian giants that came before them. Despite them all suffering from varying degrees of island dwarfism, most of Cuba's giant ground sloths were still pretty big, ranging from about the same size as a capybara to a roughly the same size as a black bear, so about 50 to 500 pounds, depending on the species. Sure, they would have still been dwarfed by their mainland counterparts, such as Megatherium, which could have weighed up to 4 tons, these sloths still managed to become the largest mammals on the island of Cuba. Still, they had plenty of threats. They coexisted with humans for about 6,000 years, and as you've probably guessed, we hunted these sloths to extinction. But there was also another predator that loved to hunt them just as, if not even more than us. On top of the Ornomegalonyx, which likely would have hunted smaller individuals, both the Cuban crocodile and a lesser extent the Cuban boa would have hunted these giant sloths back in the day. With Cuban crocodiles in particular likely having hunted them in packs or at least mobs where they would have been able to bring down even the largest of these giant sloths. The largest of these sloths would have been Megalochnus rodents, which would have weighed up to about 500 pounds, and it just so happened to have had gotten its name from its rodent-like build. Unlike modern-day sloths which crawl, or even their mainland counterparts which would have walked on their knuckles like gorillas, the Megalochnuses of Cuba would have actually walked on their palms just like modern-day rodents. This gave them an appearance much more similar to that of a capybara, which makes sense as they both likely had very similar feeding habits. Man, it's hard not to love capybaras. But don't worry, they still had the iconic sloth claws, which they would have used in self-defense against both ancient humans and Cuban crocodiles. Also, these sloths would have likely been far from slow, but as we can't travel back in time, we really can't verify this for sure. But there was another giant herbivore on the island, which we could guarantee you, for a matter of fact, was even slower than these giant sloths. Yes, believe it or not, just like the Seychelles Islands and also the Galapagos, Cuba also once had its own giant tortoise. Actually, a lot of the Caribbean islands and even some parts of the Bahamas all had their own unique species of giant tortoise, all of which were inevitably wiped out by, you guessed it, humans. So instead of answering how they went extinct, I'm going to tell you guys how these tortoises got to these islands in the first place. Unlike their turtle counterparts, tortoises are not good swimmers by any means, but they do still float, and unlike most mammals, they could go a very long time without fresh water. So when hurricanes hit their natural range, they will often blow out a multitude of different animal species, including tortoises out to sea. And since the tortoises don't dehydrate easily, they could simply float, having the ocean currents take them to new lands. Interestingly enough, it's actually believed that the Cuban giant tortoise shared a common ancestor with the Galapagos tortoises not too long ago. Yet, unlike the Galapagos tortoises which got washed out on the Pacific side, it seems like the Cuban and Bohemian giant tortoises were washed out into the Atlantic. Once these tortoises did reach these islands, since they had few predators, they were able to balloon in size and take advantage of the plentiful prey and the lack of competition. In this case, their prey was simply just vegetation. Though like their Galapagos counterparts, despite being terrible hunters, they probably would have scavenged on the occasion. With even dead and dying primates having been reported being eaten by tortoises. Another super interesting fact about these Atlantic giant tortoises is the fact that they haven't just been found on islands. Believe it or not, giant tortoises weren't just once widespread throughout the Caribbean, but they were actually found in Florida as well until very recently. Meaning that these tortoises likely originated in Central America, only to get blown out into the Caribbean, for them to only then balloon to incredibly massive sizes, and then get further washed out all the way back to the mainland, except this time in North America. Yeah, that's one crazy story for you. While these tortoises would inevitably go extinct both on the mainland and on the Caribbean islands, at least some of their closest relatives out in the Galapagos still persist to this day. Believe it or not, some of the Galapagos tortoises could get even larger than their Cuban counterparts. 
with some of these ancient creatures even reaching up to 700 pounds. Still, the giant tortoises of Cuba were and still are far from Cuba's only giant reptile. There still remains two incredibly fascinating giant ancient reptiles that persist in Cuba in modern times. Being the two largest endemic predators in Cuba, the Cuban boa and the Cuban crocodile also deserve lots of love, as they are not just incredibly amazing prehistoric creatures, but they're also still alive today. The Cuban boa, despite going under the radar by many, is one of the largest snakes in the New World, being capable of getting up to 16 feet long and snatching hutia rats straight out of the trees. Similar to the reticulated pythons of the Old World, these snakes could also be found in caves where they'll regularly feed on bats, and could even be found in the cloud forest of Cuba, which could be over 4,000 feet above sea level. These snakes could even be found in civilization, where they are shockingly adaptable and will also occasionally feed on farm animals. But thankfully, they have a slow metabolism, which helps to keep them out of trouble. Still, despite their adaptability, they face many threats, including but not limited to habitat loss, introduced diseases, and most importantly, falling victim to car strikes and people directly, as unfortunately a lot of people, no matter where they are, simply don't like snakes. At least in recent years, the Cuban crocodile has been getting a lot more love. While they aren't the only crocodilian that could gallop, and it's still debatable if they really are the most terrestrial modern day crocodilian, you gotta admit, these crocodiles are absolutely gorgeous. Large individuals could get over 10 feet long, and these chunky boys could go really fast, and they are also highly predatory, even compared to other crocodilians. This is because prior to human arrival, these crocodiles would have gotten most of their food by direct pursuit chases on land with some of their favorite animals to chase having been giant ground sloths of the past, though in modern day, without such a large food source, they mainly hunt on hutia rats, monkeys, and really any sort of aquatic prey item they could get a hold of. They're also known for working together on the occasion in order to feed, and while debatable, you could even argue some of their teamwork could be considered pack hunting. In other words, their pack hunting skills and their incredible athleticism basically makes them the real-life equivalent to the Velociraptor raptors from Jurassic Park. Speaking of which, another thing that makes the Cuban crocodile so unique is its incredibly curved teeth, which share way more similarities with dinosaurs than to other modern day crocodilians. Most modern alligators and crocodiles have much straighter, and in the majority of cases, broader teeth. Despite how dangerous they could be, people almost never get bit by them though. That is because the Cuban crocodile is now currently restricted to only two swamps in all of Cuba, of which neither one of these swamps really have people, at least not as regular residents. But what a lot of these swamps do share is their habitat with the American crocodile, which occasionally hybridizes with this incredibly unique species. With both these factors combined, the Cuban crocodile is critically endangered. But thankfully, with so many people trying to help this incredibly unique animal, there's a chance they could rebound in the future. And let's face it, who doesn't want a modern day dinosaur living in their world? Heck, even though I'm not the biggest fan of cloning extinct species, there's always a chance some of, if if not possibly all of these animals, will be brought back from extinction in the future. But really, only time will tell. What matters is that we try to protect the incredibly unique wildlife that still currently exists in Cuba today. Too many incredibly unique animals have gone extinct in Cuba's past, whether it's the Caribbean monk seal, or the giant Cuban eagle, or all of the animals we talked about today. We cannot have the same thing happen to the Cuban boa or the Cuban crocodile. So if you want these incredibly amazing animals to persist, then please feel free to spread the word about just how incredible all of these animals were and how incredible so many different modern day animals truly are. Now if you enjoyed this video, I try to make animal mini documentaries every single week, so please do whatever YouTuber ask is from you, like, subscribe, all that blah blah blah, or else I'll cry about it because I need money and YouTube is my main source of income. So in the meantime, you better do those things and goodbye.